there's a couple of factors there, which is that schools exist downstream of society. Um, so obviously then the all, all of the contexts of the world outside of schools come in through the schoolhouse door. So schools are a function of society, but schools also play such an important role in shaping the world that kids graduate into. So if we bring up something like college and career readiness, well, what kinds of careers are we preparing kids for? Is it for the Amazon warehouse? Because that's a different kind of preparation, right? Um, what does what does a democratic classroom? What kind of function does does uh, the study of poetry serve, right? What does having autonomy and having student decision making in school look like? It, as far as preparing kids for that Amazon warehouse, where they're not going to have autonomy, where they're not going to, right? The, the poetry is not going to be built into that. So I, this is where we try to reshape that college and career readiness question into asking like, well, what is it actually that is worth preparing students for about the world? And are we willing to build that better world alongside of them, starting with schools? And right. Um, so if if kids go out into the workforce um, and and they're, they're going to demand more if they've experienced, right, a democratic classroom, an autonomous one where they are respected and they have a say and they have a stake and they have all these things. Um, and, right, a world, a, a classroom where they learn about all of those invisible structures and systems that Puni had mentioned as well, they're going to go out into the world and demand that those invisible structures and systems change, which is why state legislatures are trying to crack down on them so hard, right? So we, we kind of see that dialogue um, between schools and society as being one and the same, right? We change schools to change society. Um, I think the the again to come back to the politiza politicization um, of education currently, it that is a case study in itself, right? Why else do they want to um, ban books and ban um, gender identity instruction and um, right to to ban the teaching of so called divisive topics unless it's to have some kind of downstream effect on what the rest of the the, the uh, society looks like. And I would always push back on my own administrators and to say, you're telling me that you want to send kids to the University of Iowa without understanding the importance of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement of 2020 or the impact that you know the death of George Floyd had around the world. You're going to send them out to, <laughs> to Kansas. You're going to send them to the coast. Yeah, Kansas, nothing without... wrong with the Kansas. Okay, Nick, K Kansas is... <laughs> No, I'm saying in into spaces where people don't look and think and sound like you know, like like uh, uh, the av the average uh, uh, incandescently white Iowan, like I am, right? Um, so who have Nick, different uh, ideas uh, and backgrounds.